Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making a beautiful Ariel Little Mermaid cake with Ariel sitting in her shell and Sebastian the crab down the bottom. The first thing you need to do is make some fondant details and you're going to need to make them ahead of time. To make the shell find two bowls that are the height of the torso of your doll and line them with non-stick baking paper. Take some bluey green fondant and knead in some Tylos powder. Now this just helps the fondant to dry out faster. So once you've added it, you need to work fairly quickly with your fondant. Cut your fondant in half and place half in a sealed bag. Cut the remaining piece into quarters and then cut one of those quarters into half. And then to make those two pieces a bit bigger, cut a little bit extra off the next ones and add them to those bits. Now starting with the middle biggest piece, roll it into a ball and then flatten it into a snake that is fatter at one end. Roll that out using a rolling pin just to flatten it and then lay it across the middle of the bowl so that that top curve is near the top edge of the bowl. Repeat that with the other four bits with the smaller ones on the outside edges. Now roll some purple fondant quite thinly and then dampen the shell with a little bit of water on your finger. You don't want to drown it, you just want to really thin, just dampen it slightly so the fondant will stick together. Add the purple fondant over the top, smoothing it down so that you can see where the edges are. And then use your knife to trim around the shape of the shell. Now you need to make your shell at least three days before you want to do your cake. And that's so that it has time to dry out. Because we want to stand it up, the shell can't be soft, it needs to be set firm. If you're super organised, you can make it a month ahead and just store it. Use the back of your knife to draw lines down the inside there. And then use the back of a teaspoon just to give it a bit of an indent between the lines, just to give it a bit of texture. Brush a little water around the very edge and then add a thin snake of pale blue all the way around, just pushing it into those curves and keeping going. Then brush it lightly with white luster dust to give it a pearly look. And you can see here, I've lined the bottom half of the shell the whole way round and rounded it at the top there. But for the other half of the shell, I've left it longer and that's so it's gonna be easier to put it on the cake when we get to that bit. With the bottom of the shell, take a circle cutter and cut a hole in the center of the base all the way through and take that piece out. Now for some coral, roll some pink or you could use orange or whatever colors you want and use a straw and cut out lots and lots of little circles. Trim it and then place it over a rolling pin covered in baking paper and shape it how you want it to be. There's no right or wrong here, just make it a bit 3D and then leave that to dry. Now for the cake itself. You'll need three round 20 centimeter cakes and I'm using my sponge cake recipe. The video for that and the frosting recipes is on the howtocookthat.net website and I'll link to that below. I'm using two batches of buttercream and coloring it using blue gel food coloring. Add a sponge to the cake board and then a layer of jam or you could use lemon curd or buttercream here. Add another cake on top, more jam, and then your third cake, so we have quite a tall cake. Cover the whole thing in blue buttercream, and you can spread it on using a spatula or use a large flat nozzle and pipe it around, which is just a bit quicker. Then use a large spatula or a straight edged knife to smooth all around the edges and make it look good, and then put it in the fridge to firm up. To make Sebastian the crab, roll a ball and then use the end of a piping tip to make a circle indent near the edge. Then use the palm of your hand just to squash it down slightly so it's a bit flatter. Take a little ball of fondant and cut it in half and make a slit in each one and then use your knife to bend over the ends to make it look like a little claw. Run your knife around the wrist part to make two lines and then repeat that with the other one. Roll a thin snake, really thin, and cut six legs. Roll another oval of fondant and add the legs to it. Then using the blunt side of your knife, lift them up in the center there and then just gently press to bend them over. Put a little bit of water on top of that and then add the shell on top. Now you can just add the claws to the front by pressing them on one and then the other one. And then you can use some nonstick baking paper to lift up one claw slightly so it looks like he's lifting it up. 
for its head roll an oval of fondant and press to make an indent for each hole where his eye is going to go. Then use a knife to indent in the middle between the eyes there and then just straighten up the eye sockets if you need to. Add a ball of white into each socket and then make a cut just below those eyes and pull and press down to make his mouth come open and press down to make a nice hole there. Add a thin snake just under his eyes, then roll a teardrop shape and make a line in the center and add that in his mouth for the tongue. Add some spaghetti to the base of the head and add that onto the body. Then add another snake around the bottom of his mouth like a bottom lip and up and around the sides. Trim that off and then use an edible marker to draw black dots on his eyeballs. Transfer your cake onto a plate or a cake platter, whatever you're going to be serving it on, and then add some of that coral around the edge. And you can make a cut into the cake like I'm doing here and poke it into the sides if you want it standing up. For the seaweed, just roll out some green, cut strips and then simply twist them and add them to the side of the cake. And this looks best if you use a couple of different shades of green instead of doing them all exactly the same. To make the tube coral, roll out some orange in a strip and then add a snake of yellow down the centre. Roll it up so that the yellow is in the middle of the tube and give it a gentle roll to smooth it out. Cut a piece from your snake and then push down in the centre so that it makes a hole and you can see the yellow in the middle. Then add that to the side of the cake and use the back of a skewer just to roughen the surface a bit. And then add more of those in different sizes to make a nice little group. Roll a snake of white and then split the top of that in two and then split that branch in two and split each of those again and roll the ends down a little. Dampen it with a little water and then add it to the side of your cake. Then poke it with a skewer just to roughen it up. To make some shells, just get a ball of fondant and flatten it out. Squeeze it in the middle to make it scrunched in a bit and then cut that in half to give you two shell shapes. Then use your knife and make indents from the centre out to the outer edge. Once you've done that, just shape it down and around your finger a bit so that it's sort of going down on the edges and rounded on the edges a bit. Brush them both with some luster dust. I'm using silver, you can use whatever colour you like. And then add them to the side of the cake. For our bubbles, cut a circle of white fondant and then cut a smaller circle out from the middle. So you're left with like a little ring and then just gently push that onto the side of the cake. Add your shell to the top of the cake, placing it not in the centre but slightly forward, and that's so that you have room to add the supports for the top of the shell in the back of the cake. If you want your buttercream to look rippled like water, push down firmly on the shell and it will give it a slight sort of rippled effect. To make the pillow, take a ball of pink fondant and shape it into a square. Pinch each of the corners to make them a bit more pointy and then take a knife and run a line around the middle for the centre seam of your pillow. Roll a super thin snake of green and then use your knife to cut it into equal length little bits. Squeeze them together at the top and then just add them onto the corner of the pillow using a little bit of water to make it stick. Then add a little ball of green on top just to finish that off. Use the back of a spoon to indent the centre of the pillow so it looks like someone is sitting on it. Then cut a rectangle out of the middle and so that it looks just like this and this is going to give room for our doll to go down the centre. Cut a rectangle out of the cake and use a fork just to scoop that extra cake out. Then add the pillow to the top of the shell lining up the holes. Wrap Ariel's legs in plastic wrap and then place her into the centre of the cake. Make sure that you can still see her hips and the top of her legs because we want to make it look like she's sitting on the pillow, not like she's sunken into it. Roll a snake of fondant that is fatter at one end and it should be about the thickness of her hips. And I'd suggest that you use tylos in this fondant too so that it sets quickly. Cut the fatter end into two and then use your thumb and finger just to flatten out those ends so that they can sit nicely around Ariel. You don't want them too thick or it's going to make her look huge. Add it around her hips 
and then gently bend the tail roughly putting it into place you should bend it around at knee level and then squeeze the end to flatten it at the back just use scissors to cut off the excess fondant and then smooth it down and rub it with your finger or your thumb just to smooth it and make it all look nice grab a spoon and push it down and around so that it's going down in where the pillow is Add a snake of light blue around her waist, a bit like a belt, but making it narrower and going down at the front. To make the fin, cut them out of fondant mixed with tylos and draw some stripes down them. Then just use some water to attach the fins to the tail. While it's drying, you will need to support it. I'm using cups and a fork. You can use whatever you have that will be the right height and you'll need to let that dry overnight. Brush the tail with diluted green gel colouring and this is just going to give it a little bit of that flowing sort of look to it. And then once that's completely dry, brush on some lustre dust to give it a bit of a shimmer. Just before you're ready to serve the cake, remove the supports and then add the top half of the shell. Now I'm just having it, the top bit of it here to sit on the base, it should almost be balanced. And then just add two cake support rods in behind it to hold it into place. And you can hide those with more seaweed if you want to. And now your Ariel cake is ready to put a smile on the face of your little princess. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here for the recipe here for last week's Easy Rainbow Steam Cake, here for all my cake videos, and here for my YouTube channel. This cake was requested by Lysandra, Annie D209, Josie Lynn, Cassie, Zoe, Hugh, Taylor, and all of these other lovely subscribers. Add your request below, make it a great week, and I'll see you all on Friday.